Sharif Cooper. You, know, you about to start hating. I could just feel it. Sharif Cooper <laughs> is a player that is getting a lot of hype. And I think most of it is due to him being a high school star. He was a star mm. in high school. He already had hundreds and thousands of followers. Every single time ball is life or overtime or whatever out, whatever high school YouTube channel drops a video on Sharif Cooper, it gets millions of views. You know, that's Sharif Cooper has that star power and he has a lot of fans. And that's why a lot of people, you know, I've seen I've seen a draft big board that has Sharif Cooper seventh in this draft. I've seen one that has him 11th in this draft. And a lot of people are high on him. And wait, before you, you don't think Golden State would be a good spot, though? No, I don't. You don't think so? No. Playing behind Steph? No. You, wait, you think they should consider taking no, a No, not seven. seven. Not seven. I'm okay. Let me finish first because okay. I think Sharif Cooper, look, at Auburn, his first year, he averaged 20 points, four rebounds, eight assists. And you look at those numbers and you say, wow, for a freshman, that's phenomenal. But then you look at it and he shot 39% from the field. He shot 23% from three. His free throw percentage was good at 82%, but there is no correlation between free throw percentage and three point percentage. There's no correlation between that. So just because you're a good free throw shooter doesn't make you a great three point shooter. So his efficiency was bad. And then he also averaged four turnovers a game. So for every two assists, he had one assist. I'll say this. Sharif Cooper is an elite passer. I don't think there's a better passer in this draft than Sharif Cooper. I think a Sharif Cooper second is probably Josh Giddy. Sharif Cooper is the best passer in this draft. His playmaking ability is off the charts. His vision is off the charts. When I see him pass the ball, I just say, wow, that was amazing. And his ability to pass in different angles is also top notch. I also think he's good at facilitating. He's good at reading defense because in college, a lot of teams threw doubles at him, played different variations of zone. And Sharif was able to pick that apart because he understands the game at a high level. And I don't want to knock him for that. But that's kind of where the pros kind of stop because his weaknesses are that he can't shoot very well. Not only a three-point shot, he's inefficient at that, but from the mid-range, he didn't show any ability from the mid-range to make me comfortable to say that he'll be good in the mid-range in the NBA. And also, even though he's an elite passer, Auburn gave him all of the responsibility, which means that he had the ball in his hands all the time. And because of that, he made a lot of mistakes. He got a lot of passes deflected in passing lanes. He has short arms. He drove to the basket a lot and got stuffed and blocked. And these are against college players. So against NBA players where players have bigger wingspans, they are more athletic, where it's going to be tougher for Sharif to get separation on drives. I worry about that because I worry that he's just going to get blocked or there's going to be even more passes deflected. So I think his size is a big con, and that's why he's falling in in. In this draft, a lot of scouts see see him as an early second rounder. I've seen some scouts say that he could fall to the second round. I think that's a little bit crazy, but Sharif Cooper does have real weaknesses that may not translate to the NBA. When I see him, I see a Trey Young light because of that similarity in playmaking and passing. But Trey Young was a great shooter in college, pulling up from the logo. He was winning games. Sharif Cooper. He can't hit. He can't hit threes. He can't hit threes. He misses. He shoots twenty three percent. And I also see some Brevin Knight in him. I know a lot of you new school fans don't know who Brevin Knight is, but Brevin he Knight really averaged does. nine points, eight assists in his rookie year and made the playoffs with the Cavaliers as a starting point guard. Brevin Knight is a good player, and I also see an Ish Smith type of player, just a quick, twitchy guard. Ish Smith doesn't have the passing, but in terms of that quick quickness and twitchiness, I think they are kind of similar in that department. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, just, I know you. I, I know you love Shreve Cooper, so I want to hear what you have to say. No, I do, and I like. I just I love his game. His game is very, like you said, very flashy, very like wow. Like he's he's like you said, he is the best passer hands down in this draft. I think he's the best playmaker. The beauty about it is him being at that size. He you, he can run. I think he can run an offense at an NBA level. At, not right now, but 
in the future with the right team. You know, he has the ability to break down defenses, break down zones. He has the ability to read two, three steps ahead of the defense. And I think that's something that is great for a point guard, especially at his size. You know, he has to stick out and his playmaking sticks out. Now, it's 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 weird because his his size, you know, he's very small. He's even smaller than Trey Young, I believe. And he's has small arms, but he has great. He's very quick. You know, he's very quick with his feet. He's very quick on his first step. He has ball handling moves so he can get past the defender. The thing I push back a little bit is you say NBA players, you know, they're going to be bigger and stronger. But I think in the NBA, he's going to have a lot more spacing and it's not going to be a lot. Of, the, the defense is going to be zoned in on him as they did in college, where it's just like, OK, it's Sharif and nothing else in the NBA. I think he's going to have a little bit more help, which is going to deviate those turnovers and help him be a little bit of a better shooter. His jump shot is a little wacky. I don't like it. It looks extremely funny, although he is able to he does create a lot of fouls. He is able to get to the free throw line so he's he can hit at a high free throw rate. So he's going to get those free throws. With the weaknesses, though, is the three-point shooting, which in this NBA, you need to shoot threes, especially at that position. You need to be able to shoot threes. His defense, I don't know if it's his size or his effort, but his defense isn't good right now. He needs to work on that. And like you said, he gets blocked a lot. He can get there, but he does get blocked a lot due to his size. He has some moments where he makes some elite finishes, but he does get blocked. His passes do get deflected. I don't see him dropping in the second round. I think... You know, with him, with teams, like, I think the teams that need a playmaker, like the Knicks, like, I'm trying to think of another team. He won't I, go to the Knicks. He, he probably won't, but I'm saying teams like maybe New Orleans, if Lonzo walks, you know, just teams that need a playmaker. I think Sharif with the right development can definitely be a starting point guard in the league with that type of playmaking. He just needs to develop things that Trey Young developed, you know, that elite floater, you know, where you can't, now you can't block that, the separation, the pick and roll schemes that I think Sharif already has. The shooting, he needs to expand his range or get his jump shot up. I think if he can do things, he can watch guys like Trey Young, like Steph, who doesn't have the physique or the athleticism, watch them play, Chris Paul, and see how they break the game down. I think he can definitely, in the right position, be a starting guard in the NBA. I know because Sharif is small, uh, that's a knock on him. And, and a lot of people have said, well, you got these other smaller guards who have succeeded, like Trey Young, like a Chris Paul. But Trey Young not only was an elite playmaker and passer, I think he's even better than Sharif in that. He was a great shooter. And part of the reason why his percentages are 35% from three are because he takes logo threes. If you were to take threes at the line, he probably shoot 40% close to there. Look at Chris Paul. Chris Paul, coming out of college, his game was already polished in terms of he had a lot of things in his arsenal. He was way more shifty, more crafty than Sharif. He had a mid-range jump shot. He was way more athletic. I think people sleep on how athletic Chris Paul really was. Chris Paul was an insane athlete. I don't see that in Sharif. And I'm not sure if he can run an NBA offense or start one and do it for 30 minutes because – We've seen in the NBA before in a guy like Isaiah Thomas, who has become a liability for teams, even though the, his hip injury has a lot to do with that. He has become a liability because he's a guy who mainly scores and doesn't do much else. He's, he's a liability on defense. When I see Sharif, I think he's the opposite of Isaiah Thomas in terms of he's not the score, but he has that elite playmaking ability. And if he has elite playmaking, but he doesn't offer much in terms of scoring, or on defense, how much is he really going to play? He took that lean back out of his jump shot, so now he kind of shoots straight up, but the ball still comes from his hip. He brings the ball from his hip and kind of shoots like a weird Derek Fisher type of motion. Yeah. And for him, you can see that his percentages don't lie. That 23% from three is real. It is very real. He's not a good shooter. It's not like he's taking contested threes because when I saw his game versus Ole Miss – in that second half, he had about three chances to hit a three-point shot to go into overtime or to win the game, one of those, and he missed all of them. So this guy is not a good shooter right now. If he develops a shooting, he could become something. But I think his size is, is going to be very limiting to him because do we envision Sharif being better than these top point guards in the NBA right now, like a John Morant 
or a Trey Young or a LaMelo Ball, a Cade Cunningham coming in right now, there are a lot of point guards that you'd give the upper advantage to over Sharif. And that's why I think ranking him this high in the draft that people have him ranked, people have him ranked as high as seven or top 15. I think it's a bit bizarre because I think Sharif, he's a guy who, to me at least, is somebody who can come off the bench and run your offense flawlessly and be a contributor for years in that department. I don't see him as an all-star caliber guard. I see if he's a starter, kind of like Davion, he's a low-level starter for a team, kind of like a DJ Augustine. Mm. But I see a guy who can come off the bench and run your offense great, and he's going to be a great backup point guard. But I don't know if I see that star potential because there are a lot of flaws in his game. I think if in the right in the right system, because you just said like a backup point guard that create. That's why I asked, wouldn't Golden State be a good fit? Because they need a backup point guard at 14. You know, Sharif probably would be there. This that- is where I push back. Sharif's ability to create in college, at least, was mostly due to the fact that teams were still respecting his jump shot. Right. St- teams, even though he was a bad shooter, they weren't letting him shoot. They were respecting his jump shot somewhat. In the NBA, if he's not a good shooter, teams will sag off on him. Teams will go under screens. And that's going to make it harder for him not to only drive and penetrate, but to make these passes because if he's not sucking in the defense, then where are you going to throw passes to? You know, it, it's going to be really hard for him, even though there is more space in the NBA, and I think he's going to fit better there because there is more space. There are a lot of question marks with Sharif, and I think Golden State right now is in a position – of taking a guy who's NBA ready right now. And I think Sharif has too many question marks to be NBA ready. A perfect spot I was thinking was Atlanta. Cause I think when Trey young needs a break, he needs a breather. Sharif can come right in and run the offense the same exact way as Trey young. I, I think his pro comparison is Trey young light. He'll run the offense the exact same way. And that's going to be hard for defenses to, to adjust to and to recover from. If you got Trey Young running these hot ping rows and when he takes his breather, Shreve Cooper is coming in and doing the same thing. It's going to be hard for defenses to handle that. Yeah, I think in the right situation, you know, in the right, like the right situation with the right development, I think he can be a starter, honestly. I think if Fred Van Vliet can start in the NBA, I think Sharif Cooper can be a starter in the NBA. And not because Fred Van Vliet, is a bad player. I'm not saying that, but just because he's his size kind of resembles Sharif Cooper in the sense where he's six feet, maybe 5'11", if we're stretching it, and he's small. So I think with the right development, he can definitely be a starter in the NBA. Just depends on the development. If he, Like you said, if he gets that jump shot up, if he be- gets a reliable jump shot, he becomes dangerous because now he can penetrate and hit the jump shot. Well, if he develops into a 35 and up percent three-point shooter, I think we're not just looking at a starter. We're looking at an all-star player. If, if he, he gets over 35? Yes. If 35. he can do that, I think. What is he at, like 29 at right 23%. now? percent Oh, my God. Yes. And he right. shot eight threes per game, so it was on high volume. Yeah. And also the point you mentioned about free throws, I don't know if he's going to get the foul calls in the NBA like he did in college. I, I really don't. I think in college. He definitely will get the foul calls in the even NBA. Even though the NBA, right now, the officiating is poor. One, they already came out with uh, some new set of rules that they're going to make officiating tougher and harder to get fouls. But two, I think college, in terms of officiating, is way worse. They call way worse ticky-tack fouls that it's hard to watch sometimes because the game goes by so slow. Part of the reason why Sharif got so many free-throw attempts was not only because they were calling ticky-tack fouls, but also the fact that um, he had the ball so much. So in the yeah. NBA, if he's not getting as many opportunities, he's not going to create that many foul, foul shot opportunities for himself. So I think that's another thing you have to look into. There are a lot of things with Sharif Cooper, but I think if he does develop a strong jump shot, we we could be looking at an all-star caliber player. But that's a big if because right now he he doesn't have a solid jump shot.